What's up everybody and welcome back to Morfab Industries or welcome to Morfab Industries if you happen to stumble upon one of our videos and you liked it. Uh, welcome back to you as well. Welcome all newcomers and everything else. Now before we get today's video started I just wanted to give you guys all an idea of what this channel is about. If you haven't already figured it out and you're not a subscriber and you're watching for the first time we are an automotive based YouTube channel. We do automotive fabrication, automotive repair, automotive electrical, anything automotive. We also include motorcycles, small equipment, snow blowers, lawn mowers, things of that nature. So we basically get into everything that has some sort of an engine on it. And we also do how to videos, how to learn how to weld, learning how to weld, learning how to TIG weld, learning how to MIG weld, um, you know, we go over tips and tricks about being a mechanic, tips and tricks for working on certain vehicles, and just overall we're an informational channel when it comes to the world of anything powered by gasoline or diesel. So if you're liking what you see on the channel, welcome. Hit the subscribe button, there'll be tons more. Now we do a lot of different things on this channel, but they are all related to automotive and anything with an engine on it. We are also into fabrication. Now fabrication side of things is mostly for automotive purposes. Intercooler piping, exhaust systems, headers, turbo manifolds, you name it. We do everything from aluminum to stainless steel to titanium and, and stuff like that. So if you're a newcomer, that's what we're about. You'll see me and you'll probably hear Sherry once in a while. Um, she doesn't like the camera very much so she doesn't, doesn't come on very often, if at all. But you will hear the two of us, mostly my pretty face, and uh, we're going to try to hopefully give you guys some information that you can use in your everyday lives, whether you're trying to be a mechanic or you're trying to be a fabricator or you're trying to be something of that nature. That's what we're trying to do here. Give you guys the information that you need to be able to fix whatever it is that you have or to be able to know a little bit better when you drop your stuff off at a mechanic what's going to happen, what's entailed. What am I going to get charged? And we're also going to go into a lot of other stuff. So again, if you're a new subscriber, welcome. That's what the channel's about. That's what we do here. If you just stumbled upon one of my videos and you happen to watch it, again, welcome. Thank you for watching my videos. I appreciate every single one of my subscribers and every single one of my viewers. So now that we got all that out of the way, we're going to get onto something today. My shop is a disaster. As I said in yesterday's video, my shop is a complete and utter mess from last week. So we're going to clean it today. We're going to clean the shop. We're going to put all the tools away. As soon as we get all the tools put away, what we're going to do is go and do a toolbox tour. I know how you guys love those so much. So I'm going to show you what I use to actually do the work that I do on a daily basis. This is most of, mostly my general maintenance type stuff. So we'll go over some of the special tools I have for certain vehicles and you know we'll go over the toolbox in general. And then it'll kind of give you an idea of what you might be looking forward to if you're looking to become a mechanic and you want to have all the tools to work on all sorts of vehicles and not just one specifically. So without me talking any longer, we're going to get over to the toolbox which is right there behind me and we're going to go drawer by drawer. We're going to show you guys what's in it. We're going to explain some of the specialty tools. And yeah, hope you enjoy it, guys. So here we go. I'm running out of time. Every day goes by so fast. And every moment counts, baby. I don't want to miss a thing. We can sleep under the stars. We can sleep under the stars. Or hang out in hotel bars. Driving somewhere in your car. We can sleep under the stars. We can sleep under the stars.
right guys, so now that all the tools are actually put away where they belong and the toolbox is somewhat organized, we can go over the tour. We're gonna make this short and simple. I'm gonna go over some of the specialty stuff that I use on a daily basis, but we're just gonna give you a tour of what you might need as a first starting mechanic and uh, you know maybe how to organize things a little bit. So here we go, let's dig into the toolbox. We're gonna start with the main stuff that you're gonna need if you're gonna start out and it's going to be sockets, screwdrivers and wrenches. So here is what this drawer looks like. Now, there's a missing socket right there and it's driving me crazy. But some of the things you're gonna to wanna to have, a standard size set of sockets. These happen to be just Craftsman deep sockets. I don't use standard sizes very often, but there's spark plug sockets, 3 8 7 16 half inch, 9 16 Those are pretty important, and some of your metrics will actually coincide with the standard sizes. For instance, a 3 quarter inch is actually a 19 millimeter. Um, you know, you can go 11 millimeters, 7 16 So there's a lot of interchangeabilities, but there's nothing for a half inch. 12 millimeter doesn't quite fit. 13 millimeters is a little bit too big. So you need a half inch socket. Same thing with 9 16 14 millimeters close but it's a little bit smaller. It's about a half a millimeter smaller than an actual 9 16 So then we've got, and this by the way is all 3 8 drive. So you've got 3 8 drive stuff here, which is your main go-to for everything. Then we have a set of metric six point impact sockets, a set of metric 12 point impact sockets. And these are super important for things like flywheel bolts and ARP bolts and all kinds of stuff like that that use 12 point. Then we have our short six point and our short 12 point. So those are the, the four main sets that I recommend is to have six point deep, 12 point deep, six point shallow, 12 point shallow. And these sets run from seven millimeter all the way up to 19 millimeter, which is about all you're gonna need for the, the major stuff. And then get yourself a good flex head ratchet. I've got a gear wrench and a Matco. Uh, one of them is an 88 tooth, one's 120 teeth. The more teeth, the better, which means you need less range of motion to actually get a click on the ratchet. And then various extensions, various sizes. This little stubby ratchet here is great to deal with. Then you've got a couple of little breaker bars, and we've got some much longer extensions for getting things like top transmission bolts and all that other stuff. Those come in real handy. A good set of wobble extensions where the socket actually wobbles on the end of the extension, so it kind of acts like a swivel, which is great. Now, if you get a little bit more in depth into things, <clears throat> you can get into like these sockets here, which are swiveling impact sockets. Those things are amazing. So that's the 3 8 drive drawer. You guys can, you know, screenshot this if you want to, and it'll kind of give you an idea of what's in there. Now we're gonna move on to screwdrivers. Screwdrivers are super important. Now in this set, I have your normal flathead and Phillips head. These are all Matco. They make a really good screwdriver. I love the handles on these. That's why I keep buying them. And then I've got a Torx set of screwdrivers, which come in super, super handy with a lot of the new cars. A lot of the Chrysler and Dodge stuff use these. Um, so good thing to have. And then of course, just your miscellaneous old bullshit. Hey, I need to hammer on a screwdriver type screwdrivers. Those all go here, but these are my main go-to. And you really don't need much more than this. We got a number two Phillips, we have a number three Phillips, and then you have a, a long number three, and then I believe this is a number four, this big one. Big number four Phillips, and then your typical flatheads and the Torx. So if you're just starting out, buy a good set of screwdrivers. Don't go to Walmart, don't go to Harbor Freight, get yourself a really good set of screwdrivers and you'll thank me in the end for doing that. And a good set of Torx screwdrivers. These things all come in super, super handy. All right, now, wrenches. <laughs> wrenches you can never have too many of and that's absolutely the wrong drawer. All right, so here is the wrench drawer. Now, you don't have to be a lunatic like I am and go with this many freaking wrenches. So basically, yeah, the reflection of that is actually causing the camera to do all kinds of funky stuff. So basically what you need is a good set of metric box end, open end wrenches. This set goes from seven millimeter all the way to 19 millimeter. It's Matco, they work great. 
if you're going to be using your tools daily, get a good set of wrenches. The Harbor Freight stuff works, but they're not the best. Their tolerances are not there. The materials are okay, but again, the tolerances are not there. Your 19 millimeter might be a 19.1 or an 18.9, and you never know. So get a good, good set of wrenches. Next thing that I recommend is a good set of flex head ratcheting wrenches. These are not cheap. They're very expensive, but they are probably one of my most used wrenches in this entire box. There's nothing that beats these wrenches when it comes to getting into tight places and, and stuff like that. And these particular ones from Matco, obviously, are basically a 12 point, but they fit everything. They fit square head, they fit um, rounded off bolts, they fit all kinds of stuff, and they work and hold amazingly well. That set goes from 8 to 19 millimeter. Um, those I highly recommend. One of the other things I use a lot too, and these are just Craftsman. These are Craftsman Professional stuff I bought years ago, but they are offset box end wrenches. These come in super handy when you've got like a pulley in the way and you need to get the wrench in there and actually get the pulley off, but the bolt is behind the pulley. You can use these to get back there. They're amazing. And then for recommended stuff, the last thing I recommend you pick up is a good set of both standard and metric line wrenches. Line wrenches, especially if you're doing brakes, power steering lines, anything like that, they're going to be indisposable in doing that. You'll just round stuff off left and right if you're not using a line wrench. Now, a line wrench, if you guys aren't familiar, is basically an open-ended wrench, but you've got this extra side here. So these turn into an actual six-point wrench, which makes getting stuff off a lot easier especially brake lines and tube nuts and all kinds of stuff like that now a few other things that i have in my arsenal is i have this full set of long matco uh, ratcheting wrenches non-flex head they go from eight millimeter to 24 millimeter those come in super handy but again that set is like 600 bucks so it's a little pricey i keep a bunch of bullshit wrenches around i shouldn't say that but cheaper wrenches so I can do stuff like this. You can cut cheaper stuff and not feel bad about it to make special tools that you need to make. And I have a ton of wrenches that I've had to cut up and actually make other things out of. So I use this random assortment of Craftsman and you know, there's some allied stuff in there. There's some NIT stuff in there, which I don't even know what the hell that is. There's some Westward like Harbor Freight type stuff. And then I've got, you know, your typical adjustable wrenches. I have a full set of flex head or uh, offset box end wrenches that match the other set. They just happen to be in blue, something I got from my dad. So those are your three main things. If you get a good set of 3 h drive deep and shallow sockets, some good ratchets, a good set of screwdrivers, and a good couple of sets of wrenches and some, you know, flex head ratcheting wrenches, you're good to go. You, you've got a really nice start. You've got a really good head start on things. So now we're going to get into some of the other stuff I have in my toolbox. We'll go drawer by drawer. I'm not going to explain everything, but we'll give you an idea of what's in here. So here we go. All right. So this is all of my quarter inch drive stuff. Again, you know, just quarter inch drive, small socket sets, a little quarter inch drive, torque wrench. We got some specialty stuff here from Craftsman. We've got a whole set of um, reverse torques, regular torques, uh, hex head, all kinds of stuff in there. And that's pretty much the quarter inch drive drawer. Then over here, the pliers drawer. And I forgot to mention this. You guys need a good set of pliers. But this has everything from vice grips to shears to rivet guns and needle nose, regular normal style pliers, different size of uh, diagonal cutters. I've got spring loaded diagonal cutters. We have tube cutters. We have, you know, linesman's pliers. If you want one pair of pliers, that'll pretty much do everything. Get a set of linesman's. I think these are Kleins, which are phenomenal. Use them for everything. They cut, they grip, they whatever. Having pliers is key. Get yourself a good set of long needle nose, <clears throat> then you'll be golden. Then, let's go over some specialty stuff. We'll, we'll stay in the top of the box here. 
Here we have all the fuel line disconnect tools. We've got an entire set over here of fuel line disconnect tools, transmission line disconnect tools, cooling line disconnect tools. We've got a ton of that stuff. Down here we have more specialty stuff. We have an entire set of snap ring pliers. We've got some ultra large Allen keys. This is, if you guys are going to be doing a lot of brakes, you're going to need this kit. This is the disc brake caliper tool for the rear calipers on a lot of the newer cars where you have to twist the caliper and push it at the same time. This kit does every single car out there. Makes everything very, very easy to work on. All right, next drawer, this big drawer, and I'll have to get over here to give you all of it. This is my electronics drawer. So basically what we have is our fluke meter, our scanners, our battery testers, uh, power probe, and then we have the probe itself, which is a logic-based probe for probing ECUs. We got some Allen key stuff. We've got, you know, electrical connectors, zip ties, and various other tools in there. So that's that drawer. And I'm going to go through this kind of quick, guys, because we got limited time here, but cordless power tools, more cordless power tools. That drawer is relatively empty. We got some books and manuals and stuff like that up in here that we like to keep and hang on to. We've got some measurement equipment in here, some drill bits, more measurement equipment. Random drill bits, the stuff that we don't care about, that we can just sharpen on the fly and, and go. Then we have a whole drawer of miscellaneous Allen key stuff that when we can't get our sockets into a certain spot, we use some of these Allen keys. Then we've got files, and <laughs> this is about half of the clutches that I've done over the last couple of years. So keep all your clutch alignment tools, guys, because you'll use them in the future. And then we have corded power tools. And then down here, we have all our tap and die sets. <clears throat> I have a standard and two different metric sets. We've got some specialty stuff here for doing brakes. We've got this neat little caliper retraction tool that you stick in between the brake pads and you just kind of ratchet it like this and it opens up and opens the caliper. These things are amazing. Pick one up. You won't be upset that you did. Then we've got these for doing German cars. Now what these are, is you screw these, and as you, any of you know that own a German car, German cars don't have lugs, or studs rather. They don't have studs, they have lugs. So when you take all the, all the lugs out, there's no stud there to hold the wheel, the wheel falls off. So you take these, and you screw it into one of the, the stud holes, and then this will actually hold the wheel on the car so that the wheel doesn't fall off when you take all the studs out. These things are awesome. And then of course we got a dial indicator and some tools for setting gears and doing um, rear axles and gear sets and stuff like that. Good set of BFHs, never hurts. We've got a pipe wrench. Pipe wrench for doing like alignment stuff and tie rod ends and shit like that, great. This little specialty guy right here is for doing GM truck torsion bars. So you can compress them and not kill yourself. And then we have, you know, random pullers and other stuff like that. Then we have our drawer of stuff that we hit with said BFHs. A lot of copper, a lot of brass. Sometimes it's good to be hitting on stuff with soft, soft materials so you're not ruining what you're hitting. And then of course we have our drawer of air tools. Mostly all impact stuff. And we got a lot of grinders and little saws and shit like that. Here's another set of wrenches that I bought that are absolutely amazing. They go all the way up to 19 millimeter, <laughs> and you can kind of get an idea of how long that wrench is, and it does ratchet. And the best part about these wrenches is that the heads on them are extended. So you can get into super tight places because the head is extended. They've made the wall thickness very small. So you can get into all sorts of tight spots with those wrenches that you couldn't get into with a regular boxing wrench. And then here's the drawer I dread. 
This is the I don't know where things go, so I'm going to put them in this drawer and hope they find their own way home. That's that drawer. And then, of course, across the top of the toolbox, we have a disaster. But more specialty tools there. I've got a ton more over in my other shop. But yeah, so that's the tour of my toolbox. I mean, there's a ton of stuff in there, but you notice the majority of it is wrenches, sockets, screwdrivers. Now, the one thing I didn't go over with you guys, and I just remembered it as I was walking away, and we'll go over it now, is having a good set of half-inch drive. Half-inch drive sockets, deep, shallow, six-point. You don't really need 12s unless you're working on BMWs. And if you're working on BMWs, then there's a need for like a 36 millimeter 12 point, which is really odd. Or if you're working on like my Ducati and you need a 46 millimeter for the rear axle nuts. But, you know, and then we have our collection of torque wrenches. We have half inch drive torque wrenches, three eighths drive torque wrenches. We have ones that do Newton meters, inch pounds, foot pounds, you name it, they do it. So it's always good to have a good torque wrench and a good set of half inch drive sockets for you guys that are wanting to work on the bigger stuff. All right, so yeah, that is literally the toolbox tour. Now there's a ton more stuff in the shop that we'll be going over as time goes on. Um, but I wanted to give you guys an idea of what you need to start out and you know what you're looking at. So basically, all right, so you've got screwdrivers, need a good set of those. Wrenches, need a good set of metric standard don't really need the standards but they're good to have and sockets good ratchets 3 8 drive quarter inch drive half inch drive deep shallow 6 point 12 point get yourself a good collection of that stuff and you'll be good to go and you know what? a couple sets of pliers maybe an adjustable wrench but most of you guys that are working on cars already have that little stuff so you don't necessarily need to grab it but that's my toolbox so here's the the whole toolbox now you don't really need to go crazy like that just to give you a quick dirty down and dirty because somebody's gonna ask me how much does all that cost well this toolbox was twelve thousand five hundred dollars it's a Matco 4s top and bottom three bay the tools inside it the insurance company valued the entire box at fifty five thousand dollars so yeah um welcome to being a mechanic you are going to owe your matco snap-on mac tool guys money for the rest of your life they will show up every wednesday they will dig into your pocket they will take all your money and you will have tools to hopefully do your job to pay the matco guy when he comes the next wednesday so <laughs> it's a lot of money guys it really is a lot of money to get into this field if you're going to be owning your own business you have to own all this stuff sometimes you can get into places that have tools that they will provide for you which i highly recommend if you can get somebody to provide you with tools then wonderful or if someone gives you a tool budget awesome but you're going to spend a lot of money so if you want you know what if you tinker with cars and you're trying to get into it go to harbor freight their stuff isn't terrible. Not the greatest in the world, but it's not terrible. If you're tinkering with cars and you're building cars for yourself, by all means, go to Harbor Freight. They have some awesome deals on stuff. But if you're going to be working on stuff every day and your tools are your livelihood, buy good stuff. I cannot stress that. You will buy 150 wrenches if you buy cheap shit where you'll buy maybe two or three and their lifetime warranty so be careful with what you buy but yeah all right guys so that's my toolbox it's very late i'm very tired i'm going to now sit down and edit this video and i'm going to think about what i want to do next with you guys we got some projects coming in maybe the end of the week or so but i think i'm going to go through the shop and do a little bit more tomorrow night we're going to do our live we didn't get to the live last week unfortunately um, t-shirts have been ordered. T-shirts have been ordered. That's pretty cool. 
and uh, we're gonna go over that. And also, oh, 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 I know what I wanted to mention to you guys. So we've been working with a company that has absolutely nothing to do with this business, but I thought it was a super cool idea. So I contacted them and we worked out a little, not a deal per se, but if any of you guys have kids, I don't personally have kids, but Sherry does, and a lot of my cousins and family members do, and there is a huge crazy need for backpacks every time they come out. And uh, yeah, I'm not gonna get super, super duper into this and the reasons why I did this, but anyway, backpacks. Stupid expensive for no good reason. They're just regular, regular backpacks, but you know what? This company is called Puku Pals. And for any of you guys that watch Salamandrin or any of those guys um, on YouTube, Fargini from the Salamandrin channel started a company called Puku Pals. And that company was basically designed to create cool little backpacks that kids would actually enjoy carrying around. They're, uh, you know, animal based. They look like little animals and they have tons and tons of colors and everything else. And they're super cool. They're super cool. The price point is amazing on them. So you know what? Just a quick little blurb. I'm going to put a link down in the description. Go check them out. You know, if you got kids that you're looking to buy gifts for, you're looking to get a new backpack for them or whatever, go check them out before you hit the stores. Their stuff is really, really cute, really awesome. Um, if I were a kid, I'd buy a ton of them, but I'm not a kid and I don't have kids and I would look pretty funny with a little tiny backpack hanging off my back. But go check them out. Link's down in the description. Let me know what you think about them. I think they're pretty cool and it's another car guy who started another business with, you know, his wife and whatever else. So I thought it was kind of a cool thing. So go check the link out, see what's going on with that. And uh, all right, that's enough of that. The link will be in the description. I can't wait to do another video for you guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. It's long as hell, but you guys said you like long videos. So there you go. Toolbox tour, done, done. Toolbox tour is done. So now we're going to move on to, I don't know what. You'll find out in the next one. All right, guys, have a good night. Please like, comment, subscribe. Love all you guys. I'll see you later.